Hi guys, welcome back to Harry Makes Up. I hope you guys are all really, really well. Um, today I thought I would kind of go through pieces that are in my red carpet pro kit. So pieces I've been using a lot for award season, which it is at the minute, Golden Globes, etc. Um, there's a couple of new launches and a few things that I wanted to show you guys that I've been loving. And, you know, general pieces that I use within my red carpet kit when I am doing a red carpet client. So first things first, and that is skin. Um, I've got a lovely spot today, which is good because I, I can show you guys how I would cover that if I had a client with a breakout. Um, I'm starting with Elizabeth Arden 8 Hour Cream. Love this on my lips. So the first thing I do when I am getting a red carpet client ready is we'll often do some kind of mask. Now the mask that I still to this day always rely, rely on and take with me is my Sicily Black Rose cream mask I think it's called. I have depotted mine into a little pot because I did break the lid and also I like putting them into kind of small travel sizes. I find that really helpful and then I like to do something like um, Patchology. This is the Flash Patch Restoring Night Eye Gels. Again obviously it says night time but they're totally fine to use in the day or I use the Elemis ones quite a lot. So any of these kind of eye gels I find are really nice as well this time of year especially if you had a lot of fun in December, Christmas parties. These are nice to kind of de-puff and soothe the eye. So I always keep these. I'm not gonna pop them on myself today. Um, I've just cleaned my skin. And there's various different face bases that I'm enjoying at the minute. Still, one of my favorites has to be the Bobbi Brown one, which I have mentioned several times before, and that's because it's amazing. This is the Vitamin Enrich. This is the face base, um, Vitamin Enrich face base cream, which you guys know I love. And I'm gonna start with that because I just think it makes all foundations look better, look more radiant, um, and it is a go-to. So I'm not gonna do any face masks or anything on myself just because of time. And I do find as well, especially if you have got a breakout like mine where without being too gross, it's kind of at like the crusty stage. I know that's gross. Um, I need to make sure it's really well moisturized so that no foundation kind of catches on it. So another trick I do sometimes actually, if it is um, red carpet and someone has this kind of a breakout is I will drop a little bit of oil on top just to kind of really soften the skin because when you're going over with foundation and concealer, if there's any dryness, it's gonna catch and obviously it's gonna show the makeup up more. So skin is nice and prepped. So the next product I use a lot in my Pro Red Carpet Kit is this. This is the Laura Mercier Radiance Primer, which I have decanted, and I still think this is such a lovely one under foundation. Um, it has, I would say, a kind of peachy pearl. So not too pink, not too gold. It's that kind of a color, and I just find this really gives the skin a bit of life. And it's still quite hydrating as well but I feel like this is one of those products that just makes all foundation, similar to the um, Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Balm, just makes it look that little bit more glowy. And I think for me, it's all about the skin, so you can just see it gives a really nice radiance. Now, foundations, there is a two new launch foundation by the same brand that I am loving at the minute, guys, my red carpet kit. Um, and it's from Dior, so I have the two of them here. So there is one that is more matte and one that is more glowy. Um, and I find myself mixing the two together actually quite a lot. So I have the Dior Forever. This is the 24 hour wear high perfection skin caring foundation with sunscreen. And then I have the Dior Skin Glow, which is this one. So the two together, you can see one has like a more frosted bottle. One has a more glowy bottle. And I find I am probably more two end than I am two. 0.5 um, so I'm going to do a dot of two um, from the more matte one and then I'm going to mix it with the glowy one now if I wasn't doing red carpet and it was like editorial or some kind of appearance I would probably just use the um, forever skin glow but I do actually feel like the forever um, the high wear perfecting perfection skincare it's the longest name ever this one I feel is it's not matte, it's more of like a satin, but this is what's really nice red carpet mixed in with the glow. Um, I feel like it's just that right side of glowy, um, more like, a, like it's more like a satin, I would say. So I'm loving those two foundations and I'm gonna use a good old trusty favorite, my um, MAC, I think it's the 118 brush. And then I'm just mixing on the back of my hand. And these are pretty good coverage. So I feel like you can really, shear this out, you can build it up. It's a very, very flexible foundation. 
already in the hair. We knew that was gonna happen, didn't we? And I don't fully take it on my eyelid. I just kind of tend to brush it near where the brow is. And that's why this brush is really good because I feel like you kind of get the product really dispersed nicely and it starts to kind of just buff into the skin. So you can see this foundation, it just gives kind of like a satin appearance, but it's very perfecting. I feel like it's already taken a little bit of the redness out of my breakout. Um, there's still somewhat of kind of like a glow within the skin. And that's what I really like about mixing those two foundations together as well. Love those, they are kind of like a new favorite discovery at the beginning of this year. Um, next, I'm gonna do brows and I am just going to groom my brow first. I've just got a little spoolie here. Um, in fact, what I tend to do while brows, before I do brows actually guys, is I will always put on a bit of the NARS Pro Prime. I feel like putting this on the eyelids while I do the brows gives it time to properly dry. And for me, I still love the clear one, I have to say. I feel like I always prefer the clear one. And the product I have been loving um, this half of the year is the Ardell Stroker Brow. This was a Katie Jane Hughes recommendation. I really, really love this. I feel like the two colors I end up using the most, I think, a medium brown and black because black, you can really draw the individual hairs in. But I feel like you just get that nice amount of emphasis on the hair, but it still looks natural. And I love the fact if you mix the colors, you get a really natural finish. So I'm gonna go in with black and just add a few individual strokes. So this is where I'm gonna end up and it really is with like the lightest hand. You just wanna kinda of like tiggle it through, if that's even a thing. One thing I did do actually at the beginning of last year was I decided to put a lot of my cream shadows into palettes, which I know a lot of you guys were really worried about. So I thought I'd give you an update. In here I have some Tom Ford, some Charlotte Tilbury. I think there is some, uh, what else is in here? I have some MAC paint pots and these ones here, all my kind of most used neutral tone MAC paint pots. And I have to say none of them have dried out. So the palettes I were using were from Viewset and then this one I don't know the name of, but it was just from like a makeup store. Um, and these ones especially have lasted, even the Chanel ones I put in here and they've gone no smaller than when they were in the Chanel, the Illusion Genre pots. So this alone makes everything so much easier when I wanna take cream eyeshadows with me for a carpet, which are what I tend to use most of the time, even if I'm just using them as a base to start. Um, so I am going to use, what am I going to use? I feel like I could go with a Tom Ford, which is what I kind of stereotypically always lean towards. Um, I feel like something orangey could even be cool with my sweater. So maybe let's go for, I think I'm gonna use one of these ones, which is one of the Charlotte Tilbury ones. One of these two, yep, one of these two. Um, and then we'll go from there because I can always add in some color should I need to. So I'm gonna take a MAC 217 and I'm gonna take the slightly more goldy of the two. I think this might even be uh, Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette maybe? Um, it's just like a very kind of like clean look it gives the lid. It gives like the slight, slightest bit of shimmer. Just like a sort of satiny silk eye. It mimics really nicely. And I'm just buffing that through. And because I've got that NARS, um, the NARS primer on as well, I feel like it really holds things in place. And it, it these don't crease anyway, but it really ensures it won't crease, which is important, obviously, if I'm doing red carpet. I'm taking a little bit more pigment through the center because I always like the strength of the look to be in the center of the eye. And then just buffing, keep buffing. And you can see it just gives that natural shadow to the eye anyway. So before you've actually kind of done anything in terms of uh, shading or highlighting, you end up with this really beautiful, similar to how we did the skin, it's kind of like an eye that has a natural light source, which is really, really pretty and soft. And you know, just tap the excess with your finger. Um, I'm gonna take a smaller brush and actually do the same to the lower lash line as well with that same product, because I think it is just such a flattering color. And the nice thing with a shade like this is you can actually take it kind of like all the way around your eye. 
It gives that like pop of highlight really naturally. The thing I want to do next is give some definition into my lash line. So I could totally use a cream for that, um, but the product I'm gonna use today is this one from Dior. This is one of the Dior Backstage Pro shadows. And I love these colors here. I think these are really, really nice for kind of natural enhancing makeup. So I'm gonna use a mix of more the top two really, kind of taking the shimmery one first, and I'm going to work that into the bottom lash line. So I just want to kind of smudge that on just to give a little bit of depth, but in a very, very natural way. I think sometimes with red carpet makeup, when it is just about enhancing your natural beauty, just as soon as you give like a bit of shade or depth to the lash line, you instantly look like you have more eyelashes, your eyes look more open, and just concentrating the bulk of the pigment on the bottom lash line. I'm also gonna take a tiny bit of that under on the bottom lash line. Then with this kind of eye shape, I'll take something like a pointy blender brush and with no product on, I will just pull out the corner just so that the blend almost has a slightly tapered soft edge. And then whatever you do with that kind of definition work and underneath contouring, if you like, the eye, you can always then add color or shimmer or texture on top of the eye very, very easily and change the look up really, really quickly. So you can always think of this as like your framework. Um, so yeah, just pulling out ever so slightly and making the bottom part as well kind of join up. And then I want to do an eyeliner today, actually, because I feel like it's been such a long time since I've done just a normal eyeliner. Um, and I am gonna use black, but I'm gonna use it really, really thinly. So for me, I'm gonna use the Bobbi Brown, this is the Black Ink Longwear Gel Liner. I use this a lot. I like it because I can tight line under the eye as well, which I'm gonna do now. Um, the brush I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use this one, which is the Zoeva Wing Liner Brush, which I love. I just think it's so, so good. So for this, I want the line really, really thin. So I'm literally just gonna start by kind of leaning it into my lashes. And this is an eyeliner I have used for years, guys. I still think it's one of the best and most long lasting. So just really, really, I'm almost like with this brush, it makes it very easy just to kind of like stamp the eyeliner. And so when I come to the outer corner, I am gonna take it to a flick, but this is where you wanna make sure you take all the excess off the brush, so that the brush has a very kind of thin tail. You could even use a thinner brush if you needed to. And I'm just gonna start pulling outwards. And then when you get to kind of this point, take a Q-tip and just pull it out a little bit, sort of to there. And then with my finger, you can like take a little bit off. So you see, you almost have like a very soft wing. And then I'm just gonna repeat printing where I've kind of dragged out that new wing. So it stays very, very soft, but very, very elegant. And it almost has that kind of just opening up your eyes more and making them look very pretty. So a new product I wanna introduce you guys to, which I am absolutely obsessed with, and those of you that follow me on Instagram, just at Harrow Makes Up, will have already seen this product in action. Um, the first thing first before I show you is I have to curl my lashes. So I am using my Kevin Aquan Eyelash Curler, which I do think is my favorite. I think it's the best one I've tried. So I'm gonna give as ridiculous curl as I can stomach. So I'm gonna go really, really intense. So then this is my latest discovery and I'm obsessed guys. It's a good friend of mine who's Korean introduced it to me. Shout out Phoebe Yu. Um, this is Pamel Essence Mascara Base. You can find it on Amazon. It's about 14 bucks. Not sure what it is in English pounds, but it is a mascara base that can only be described as LVL in a bottle in that this locks your lashes into whatever position you set them. So think of this like your push-up bra. It just holds them up and it keeps them with that kind of flipped up look. It like literally locks them into place. It separates them beautifully, especially if I do want to add individuals to a lash look. This really kind of sets all the lashes into the place that I want them. Um, it comes off with normal makeup remover. 
it's clear there's no white. I've never really been a fan of those kind of white eyelash primers that give more lash. But this, if you really struggle with curling your eyelashes or you feel like any mascara just makes them drop as soon as you put mascara on, this will be your new best friend. I've already had several DMs from people telling me how much they love this product and how in a way they wish I'd not told too many people because they were like, if this stops being sold, I'm gonna freak out. Um, I've already ordered, I think three more tubes maybe as a backup. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit extra actually. So I've just dipped back in one more time. And do you see what I mean? You can literally sort of like use it to place the lashes where you want them. Isn't that insane? So there's no mascara, it's just clear. I like to give it a minute to dry properly. Um, so while I'm doing that, actually, before I go to put mascara on, I think we could go to our base. So for concealer, the concealers I am still loving in my pro kit for under eyes are the Laura Mercier. This is the Flawless Fusion Ultra Wear Concealer. I think 2N is the one I've been using on myself. Um, it's quite peachy, so it has a really nice kind of natural undertone that takes away the shadows um, and it's very brightening and I still will do kind of around the center of the face when I'm working with concealer for red carpets. Um, really into this brush guys, this is the Colourpop F5 and I really like it for concealer, it's very similar to the um, Real Techniques setting brush but a little bit more, not quite as stiff. So I'm really loving this, just under the eye, so it just really really gives a bit of lift. Just that alone I feel like is enough concealer without it getting too heavy or being too done around the eye area. Can you see the eyelashes there guys? How much they've set? Isn't it crazy? I can't get over that lash uh, primer. It's so so good. So there's not even any mascara on my eyelashes right now. Then I'm gonna take my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is in the shade 3. I could probably be using 2 now actually but I can't remember what was my kit. And I'm just gonna add a bit of extra glow, especially because I'm using a more matte foundation. Well, matte and glow mix together. And just kind of like add the glow where I want it. So I'll go back in with my foundation brush. Just, see, just to give that light back to the skin. So you can see with the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, you do quite literally just get that kind of like filtered looking skin that's very subtle, very pretty. Um, I'm gonna come to my spot very soon, but we can let him chill out for a bit. Um, I am now going to do what I like to do under the base because for red carpet makeup, sometimes it does have to go on till very late in the evening or beyond throughout the day. So I like to use very thin layers and the products I love to use are the Pericone MD, no bronzer bronzer and no blush blush. My blush one did break, so I had to put it into, uh, decant it into one of these little bottles. So I'm gonna take the bronze first, just to give a tiny bit of glow to my skin. Um, and I'm gonna use the Zoeva face shape brush for that. And I just tend to like dunk my brush in and then just start to kind of smooth it onto the skin. Such a little amount of product, so I'm not using a ton, like, but do you see how it just, it gives enough to the skin. Also gonna go in and do the same with the blush, just so there's a bit of like a stain to the skin. Um, and for this, I will literally, you can see on the back of my hand, I just have kind of like a dot. And then again, I go in because this is so liquidy. The other product that is really great for this kind of thing is the Daniel Sandler watercolor blushes. When you just want to start to add, so you're just like mixing now like a painter. And I do like a bit on my nose. I feel like if it's just here and here, it can look a bit doll-like. So I am just going to blend. And then before I come to powder, I am going to go back to my mascara. So I'm gonna use, this is the uh, Dior, this is the Plump and Volume mascara. And I'm going to go in now and give myself incredible lashes because you can just see the, and it really is for me, the Pamela is the star of the show. This stuff is so good, guys. I don't know what I did before having it now. I feel like my lashes will forever be elevated. And you can even use it through your brows as well, actually. It looks amazing because kind of set brows. If you have really curly eyebrows, you can definitely use it that way as well. 
I mean, God, you can really go to town on this. Like, you can just keep built. Like, they can get really, really dramatic if you want them to. Um, I can almost create the look of, like, a false lash effect with the Dior mascara and the pomel alone. So what I do like to do sometimes if I feel like I still want to make sure the lashes are quite separated, I will take a lash comb and just run that through. Um, so I have one that's really old now from Tweezer Man, but you guys can get these anywhere. I believe this is Tweezer Man. I think it's rubbed off. Just something like this and just go through and kind of reposition anything. I will do a tiny bit on my bottom lashes, but I do like to set first. So one thing you will learn with me, guys, is I go very backwards and forwards. There's no rhyme or reason to order my makeup. Sometimes it's what I feel like doing. Um, sometimes I change my mind. Um, one thing I did find recently that I'm obsessed with is a mini, this was from Sephora, the um, Hourglass Veil Translucent Powder, um, which I love for red carpet. I find it very seamless, very soft. Um, it's definitely got that kind of soft ethereal glow without looking powdery on the skin. So I just tap it off and I like to just set under the eyes. And for red carpet, because I've done all this kind of like underneath work, again, don't worry about the spot, I'm not really covering that yet. I will go over where I've done the uh, Paracone MD, no bronzer bronzer and no blush blush. Because I'm going to add some more product there in a bit. But this is where I'm just doing this to set under the eyes. And red carpet makeup is often when I will use different mascaras. Um, so I'm going to use the Kevin Aquan, the volume mascara on my bottom lashes. Because this has a much finer brush. And again, I'm just going to wipe a bit of the excess off. You can see it's very, very teeny tiny. And I'm just going to do a bit on the bottom lashes here. Now that the concealer is on and I've set my concealer. And then I am going to use a nude coal on the inner waterline, which I don't always do. But just sometimes I feel like a little bit of that really makes the difference on the red carpet. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Rock and Coal, um, the cheat one. And I'm just going to do a very small amount just to open up the eyes. Just to give that kind of like bigger, bright eyed look. Now that I have my base on, let's attack where is he? Here. <laughs> um, and the other thing I do is I put all my secret camouflages and Clé de Peau concealers into one of these view set palettes as well. Um, for me, the Clé de Peau concealers are great for covering blemishes, as are, where have I put them, um, the Derma Blend concealers, which I have in little bottles as well. So I'm going to make a custom mix. So I want a bit of moisture in there still so it doesn't go too dry. So I'm taking the, this is I think shade 25 from the Derma Blend uh, foundation. So I'm going to put a dot on. This is super, super full coverage, guys. So I'm taking a dot, like that will even be too much. A dot of that, I will need a fluffy brush. So I'm going to use MAC 217. And then I'm also going to mix in some of my Clay de Peau concealers, which are just here. So I'm taking, I think, probably the shade beige. And I'm just going to mix on the back of my hand. And then I'm literally just going to pat him so from going straight in, I can see that's a little bit too pale. I think what you learn as well with different kinds of spots is there are some spots that you can actually completely by optical illusion get rid of. And then there are some that will always be slightly more 3D. So really then it's just taking out the redness and just knocking them back in the skin. And this was a beast a spot, I have to say. <laughs> And then you want to buff again with the brush that had the foundation on just to take like the top layer off and then go to a really tiny brush. Still getting used to this camera guys. And I'm just gonna go in and do just a dot where it's darkest. So that definitely takes the redness out. Um, so for lips, I am going to use this pencil by Laura Mercier. This is the shade Natural Lips, which is a very pretty, Kind of nudey, it's almost like a bit more brown in it. And when I am doing red carpet, I will fill in the whole lip. What I'm gonna do is take one of these shades from the NARS lip palettes, which have definitely been a red carpet lip staple. And these just bring a bit more brightness back as well. So you can see just holding it near the skin. Um, this palette is the Super Wanted palette and I'm gonna use the shade, I think a little bit of Julie and Raquel. So I'm just gonna take a lip brush and I'm just gonna mix. In fact, yeah, I think I'm gonna use Raquel. 
which is this shade, so it's the top shade. Might dip into a little bit of the coral. And just add that. So I'm actually dipping into a bit more of the Julie as well, just to give a bit more coral. So what I can always do if I wanted to is go back in with a lip pencil now and kind of amp up anything I want to make larger. So sometimes I will just go a little bit more. Just that little bit more on the Cupid's bow or just round out anything there that I need to. So I will often take a bit of like Lana lips or something with a bit more moisture and just pop it in the center. So it's not quite a gloss, but you see it just kind of, again, brings it to life a little bit. And then to finish, really, it's just kind of bringing everything in together. So I'm going to take, um, this is an old Shua mirror brush, which I love. And I'm just gonna take a little pot of Hourglass products, I use a ton for red carpet. And this palette is so battered on the packaging now because I use it so much. It's the Ambient Light Blushes. And I tend to use, where is it, here and here. Sometimes I'll even just do a mix of all three and just kind of take them in and just add that little bit of extra glow, just where needed. Just like the tiniest bit. And then I feel like from there, if I really wanted to, sometimes I will add a bit of a cream highlighter just to tie everything back together. Um, this has been one of my favorite products in my kit for a long time now. It is one of the YSL Rouge Volupte lipsticks. Um, it is in the shade, I don't know what the shade is, but you won't be able to miss it because it's the one that looks white. Now this is a lipstick, but I use this as highlighter a lot and it's great for like pinpointing highlights. So if I want to kind of do, see just a little bit on the nose and a little bit here on the cheek, you can see it just gives that kind of like really ethereal glow and it never breaks the foundation apart. I find like tapping it in with your finger will really, really help. But especially if you're using a more matte base, I think just using some kind of like liquid highlight will always kind of bring the skin back to life a little bit. That is the finished look guys. Um, I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Quite a few mix of new products, old products, generally pieces that I'm using within my red carpet kit. I will also do a blog post to go with this with kind of like a bit more in depth of kind of like maybe like the 10 key hero products that I use in my red carpet kits um, in addition to these. Some of them may already be in that post. I'll link that down below. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's been so fun filming for you again. Um, hoping to do more videos soon and I would love for you guys to subscribe and I'll see you soon for more.